In the inner entrance to our Houses of Parliament, there is carved on the central column which supports the entire structure, words commemorative of two epoch-marking events in the history of Canada. The one is Confederation, the Diamond Jubilee of which we celebrate today. The other, Canada's participation in the Great War. The main tower of our Parliament building is a memorial of the peace born of victory. Both Confederation and the peace are immediately associated with today's ceremony. In the anthem which will peal forth at midday will be sounded the notes of O Canada, notes which will be heard far beyond the bounds of our dominion in proclamation of its 60th birthday anniversary, notes which will carry an even greater proclamation, the message of peace and goodwill to all men in all lands. Having regard to the commemorative character of the Tower of the Parliament Building, and more particularly to the 60,000 names upon the Roll of Honor in the Book of Remembrance in its memorial chamber, it was felt by the administration that the more worthily the service and sacrifice of Canada in the Great War could be commemorated, the more would the commemoration accord with the will and wish of the Canadian people. It was thereupon decided to install the caravan as the crowning feature of the memorial tower and as the most fitting symbol of the peace. In the fewest possible words, the inscription on the largest bell seeks to epitomize the purpose of the caravan as a national memorial, commemorative of the peace and of the service and sacrifice which contributed to that great end. It appears in both English and French, doubly significant when one recalls the associations of the two peoples in the Great War and in our country's story. The inscription reads, This carrion was installed by authority of Parliament to commemorate the peace of 1918 and to keep in remembrance the service and sacrifice of Canada in the Great War. By authority of Parliament, there is something splendidly impressive in those words. There is no comparable authority in the affairs of state. To commemorate and to keep in remembrance, what more meaningful words will be found in our language? To Leonardo da Vinci we owe much for the portrayal of the sacrament with which these words will ever be associated. How full of kindred meaning they are when applied to the service and sacrifice of our young country and to a peace which relates itself to the entire world. Around the rim of the bell which carries the inscription are the words, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. Such is the message of the Kerala a message of rejoicing and thanksgiving, known in biblical lore as the angel's song. It was heard from the skies nearly 20 centuries ago by a few shepherds who were watching their flocks by night. Back to the skies it returns at noon today, not the echo of a mystical strain heard on the Judean moor, but the voice of a nation in thanksgiving and praise, which will sound over land and sea to the uttermost parts of the earth, and which in the course of time, from the place where we are now assembled, may yet be borne down the centuries to come.